Narcotraffic has been an important part of Mexican society for years, so in, at this point it's also part of Mexican history. I would say that it's part of all of America's history, but we will focus here on Mexico. And for that I'm going to talk about the web series Narcos Mexico by Netflix, because it's actually a pretty good depiction of it. And well, the, the series goes like this. In 1980, in the 1980s, the drug distributors and drug protesters of Mexico were disorganized and were working independently. Obviously, this was making them to have a limited range of operations, but it didn't, it didn't seem to bother them until one guy came along. His name was Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, and well, this guy associated with family members of his. Uh, Caro Quintero, Rafael Caro Quintero, and uh, Don Neto. These guys were family members, all the three of them. And well, the thing is that uh, Felix Gallardo had a vision. His vision was to organize all of Narcos into one big organization. Their name was the Federation. And well, the 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 reason for this was to make the range of operations bigger because at first they were just dealing with wheat they were just cultivating wheat and making it go to the United States and it was a really good business, the things were going good everyone was making really good money because narcotraffic is really good money, it's easy money, it's quick money but the thing is that uh, as the time came, the Americans obviously saw that there was a lot of drug coming into their country and they created the Drug Enforcement Ag Agency, I'm sorry, uh, also known as DEA, here in Mexico it's DEA, uh, but the thing is that uh, an, there was this agent called the Kiki Camarena. Kiki came to Mexico to uh, as part of a mission to undercover as a part of an undercover mission to dismantle the drug operation in Mexico. And things were not going as well for him because in Mexico the narcos had already bought the police had already bought everyone who could do anything to them. And as they already had the police in their pockets, they were also making and coming up with new ways to get the drug to the other side. And this is where we learn that you cannot only transport drugs in containers. You can also put them in wheels, you can also put them in fruit, in cans, condoms. You can also make people swallow it and take it to the other side. And the thing is that as well as things were going economically for the group, uh, Felix Ayardo had a bigger vision. He wanted more money because, well, power corrupts people. And he decided to associate with the Colombians. As you know, the Colombians were and all already still are in charge of the production of cocaine in Latin America and those days were the days of Pablo Escobar Pablo Escobar is widely known because his operation was the biggest that has ever been seen until then and Felix Gallardo associated first with the cartel de Cali and after with Pablo Escobar but the the, the Basically, the treaty, the treat was that they were going to pass the drug to the other side and take a percentage of the money, and they were all good with it because it was good money. But the thing is that cocaine isn't the same thing as weed. You can traffic with weed a lot of time without making raising suspicions, but cocaine is a really different business. And Obviously, the DEA was starting to uh, investigate them 
was starting to recopulate information and to ask questions and this is when Kiki Camarena comes to play because well uh, Caro Quintero had the biggest weed crop in all of Mexico in the middle of the desert that was what which was impressive about it that it was in the middle of nowhere and well Kiki Camarena led the operation that made the Americans uh, get to that place and see that the DEA was all, was already meaning business, that they were making a difference into weakening the narcos here in Mexico. And the thing is that when Felix Gallardo knew about it, knew about this guy that was putting his nose when he didn't when he where well, he wasn't wanted, he decided to kidnap him. He kidnapped him obviously with the blessing of the Mexican government. Under the table they gave him permission to do that, they basically told him to do that, to know what he knew, because obviously the Mexican government wouldn't allow the narcos to say that they were also inside the business. And well, Kiki Camarena was kidnapped, he was tortured, he was killed, and after he was killed, this raised more suspicions among the Americans and they brought more people here to Mexico. They brought more agents, they brought more equipment and because of that, they were able to locate the body of Kiki Camarena and to locate the heads of the operation, to locate the heads of the narcos, to, the, to locate the heads of the narcotraffic. And this is where things get interesting, because uh, Felix Gallardo started this tradition among narcos to back stab in the back each other, stab each other in the back, because he gave them Caro Quintero. Caro Quintero was in prison for a lot of years. He was released just recently, this, this decade he was released. He was in prison since the 80s. But yeah, he was in prison because of Felix Gallardo that betrayed him and gave him up to save his own. And after that, he was still being persecuted by American authorities because now they weren't only meaning to transport the drug. They wanted to also sell it. And this was a big deal in that time because if you can also sell it, you don't long you don't longer need to wait the other guys to pay you. You can pay yourself with their product. And this is where some other major figures come to play. As uh, Joaquin Chapo Guzman, he started racing. From those times, he started working. He was a simple worker of Sinaloa Cartel, but uh, as time passed, he started to climb up places in the organization and this is when he came up with the idea of making tunnels and taking the drug from underground and but the thing here is that obviously the other organizations weren't happy with them evading taxes because that that's why they did that because they didn't want to pay the tax that Felix Gallardo allowed the other cartel to have from them when they crossed the drug from their territory. And the thing here is that the narcos have been fighting about territory all along since the start of time, since the start of the business, because obviously if someone comes and tells you that there's gonna be a, a lot of money, you are in. But once Felix Gallardo started uh, betraying his own um, and killing off people from his own, own, own organization they knew that something was wrong and this is where another really important nar narcotraffic man comes to play and he is Señor de los Cielos he is the one who was in charge of the of the place where the Sinoans had to pass his drug their drug through and at the end basically what happened with Felix Gallardo was that 
it was that even though he was the one who organized them all and gave them the business of cocaine, he was left aside because he didn't see them as their partners. He saw them as their worker, as his workers. And obviously they weren't happy with that because, well, they had the business, they had the place, they had the weapons. The only thing Felix Gallardo was doing by that moment was give them orders because um, Guadalajara isn't close to the border. It isn't close by any means. So obviously the guys from Sinaloa, Chihuahua, Coahuila, eh, Tamaulipas were the ones who were to decide. And that's what happened at the end. The, they <laughs> were the ones who ended up betraying Felix Gallardo and he went to prison. But once he was in prison, the organizations, they had the intention to help each other out in order to maintain the business, to maintain the peace between the organizations but that was only the beginning because after that, after Felix Gallardo the organizations began to grow a lot and they grew too much until they started having war between them that's why the war against drugs um, struck them all so hard because they weren't united anymore. As they weren't united, they had to fight off everyone, every man for his own. And even though it worked for a while, at the end, the narcos started to make uh, agreements with the government. They started to have relationships with the people in the government, even though it was under the table again because obviously you cannot have the criminals to be associated with your government even if they give you a lot of money because it's not ethical or whatever but yeah it's basically information that everyone knows that if you are born in those places you have to study hard and get out the, get the fuck out of there or start working for the narcos and risk your life so if you want to know more about narcos you should read a series of books that is made by that are made by periodists and are literally exclusive interviews with all these guys that were there since the beginning obviously the ones that aren't dead yet because in that business you die if you don't retire early you die so it's like a whole thing